Welcome back to On The Move. We're watching shares of Apple fall about three quarters of a percent. This is after the big unveil yesterday, the Apple event with the new iPhone 12. Dan Halley is watching all of that for us. The one thing you never hear anyone address at those events is, can you fix the, the speaker on these things? You always have to tell somebody, talk into the speaker. But what have you got for us, Dan? So the, the big thing, obviously, out of this event was the fact that 5G is coming to these iPhones. Um, they're going to be the first Apple devices with 5G. They'll support both uh, or the, the two main versions of 5G, uh, millimeter wave, uh, as well as the mid and low band 5G. Millimeter wave is what you hear about uh, from Verizon, our parent company. That's the you know exceedingly fast 5G, but it goes about a block. So it's not really going to uh, do much for most people. Uh, the larger uh, expansive 5G is that mid to low band. That's going to be available on uh, Verizon now, uh, as well as T-Mobile, which has the largest network uh, for 5G uh, and AT&T. Uh, but the thing about 5G is really, I think, you know, when it comes out of the box, it's not really going to impress very many people because, A, those networks are still in their infancy. So uh, outside of T-Mobile, you're not really going to be able to get much 5G connectivity, and B, there's no real apps out there that take advantage of those kinds of increased speeds. Uh, it took a while for 4G LTE to really take off and for us to get apps like Spotify, uh, Netflix streaming on our phones, uh, Grubhub, uh, you know, I guess uh, Tinder and, you know, things along those lines. Uh, try using those on 3G and you'll tear your hair out. But 4G really allowed them to kind of come into to fruition. Uh, we still haven't seen that with 5G yet. So when you take the iPhone out of the box, and try to connect to those uh, networks, you may be a little bit disappointed. That said, the rest of the phone looks like a major upgrade. We're talking about the new designs. Uh, they have OLED screens throughout the entire line, which is something that hasn't happened before. OLED provides a better viewing experience overall in terms of color uh, and uh, the darks that are able to be displayed. Uh, and then the cameras are getting big upgrades. You're getting a new night mode uh, on the entry level iPhone 12 mini and iPhone 12, uh, and then improved uh, night vision on the iPhone 12 Pro and 12 Pro Max. So uh, it's an upgrade across the board for sure. I think if you've been looking to upgrade your iPhone, this is certainly a great time. Uh, the 5G, I think for most people who hold on to their phones for some time, you might as well upgrade now because those apps are going to come and those networks are going to be built out more. It's just not going to be as soon as you take it out of the box that you're going to get that big kind of to-do out of these new iPhones, but certainly a big upgrade from Apple. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on them. Dan, what you're describing, though, doesn't sound super revolutionary to me, right? I mean, and the one thing, the, one of the big changes they made, too, didn't they get rid of the charger or something, which is maybe revolutionary in a bad way? People aren't too psyched about that. Yeah, they're not giving you the charging brick, and they're not giving you the old headphones that they always came with. And that's to save on, you know, recycling, I guess, that uh, Apple says, which, you know, also will save on money. As far as the boxing goes, uh, the boxes themselves will be smaller uh, so they can pack more into shipments and they won't have to put in charging bricks uh, or those headphones. But, you know, I, I think as far as revolutionary goes, look, we're we're kind of at this point in smartphones where we look at these advancements and think, well, what's really the difference? And sure, you know, the iPhone 11 is still a great device. I mean, I have a I'm using a 11 Pro Max right now. Uh, as my camera, and it looks fantastic. Uh, I think, you know, when you go from the people who haven't upgraded, though, in a few years, which is a large swath of the population, this is going to be a huge change from them. If you had an iPhone 8, an iPhone 7, an iPhone 6, this is going to be a massive upgrade as far as the cameras go, the screens go, uh, how you use the device, by the way, uh, since you don't have the, the home screen, that's something that went away with the iPhone 10 and 10s uh, and 11. So I think it's going to be a big upgrade, but you know, everything is incremental now as far as smartphone upgrades go. So if you do have an 11, I don't think you necessarily need to upgrade unless you really do want that 5G, uh, in which case get it. But recognize when you open the box, yeah, you're going to be able to download things a little bit faster. But at this point, that's about it. And that's more on the carriers and the uh, network companies than anything else. Hey, investors, Zach Guzman here. Are you interested in learning more about the markets and getting the latest financial news? Well, then click right here to subscribe to our Yahoo Finance YouTube channel. Get the latest up-to-the-minute market analysis, big interviews in the world of finance, and information on how to manage your money every day, wherever you are.